While monetary policy can be an important tool and a powerful tool in regulating and trying to control the business cycle, it does have a certain number of limitations. Uh, and one of those most important limitations uh, is what's known as the zero lower bound. And so the policy rate in the United States, uh, the federal funds rate, can't really go below zero percent. Um, there are some central banks around the world who have set it a little bit lower than zero percent. Basically, they uh, take away part of the reserves for banks uh, over time, um, but it's not a, you can't do it uh, long term and you can't do it significantly. Um, so once you hit zero, you're basically done. There's not much else you can do. What the United States did uh, in the last um, recession was after they hit the zero lower bound was they tried something called quantitative easing. Uh, and in this case, the Fed bought uh, a number of different assets. So they bought treasury bonds along with treasury bills. Uh, so treasury bonds are longer term government bonds. And so they were trying to reduce longer term interest rate rates as well as short term interest rates. And they also bought mortgage backed securities. Um, and these were bonds uh, that were created um, with a bunch of mortgages. And when the housing market fell, nobody really wanted to buy them from banks. And so the Federal Reserve sort of stepped in kind of in their role as lender of last resort uh, and purchased these assets from banks and freed up uh, some of the banks in terms of what they could uh, now do. Another major limitation is for countries that no longer have their own currency. Um, so if you don't have your own currency or if your currency is pegged explicitly to another currency, then you don't have your own monetary policy. You can't change um, the interest rates because uh, either the peg won't hold or you just don't have that control because you don't have your own currency. And so countries within the Eurozone, especially those ones that were struggling, countries like Greece and Ireland and Italy and Portugal and Spain, um, couldn't really rely on monetary policy. And so monetary policy in Europe was difficult because there were some countries like Germany that were doing quite well and some countries like Greece that were really not doing well and so it was unclear exactly what the appropriate monetary policy uh, should have been. So when we do get a demand shock, uh, so you know if we have a fall in housing wealth or we have um, a drop in business confidence or whatever it is and we go in this case from a point like C to a point like D, the goal of government policy, both monetary and fiscal policy, is to try to increase aggregate demand. Monetary policy does this by decreasing nominal interest rates. Fiscal policy does it through tax cuts and increased government spending. But the goal is the same, and the goal is to increase aggregate demand back to where it was. Um, if we think about what happened after the financial crisis, we used both monetary and fiscal policy. Unfortunately, what we did was not enough, and so we ended up someplace probably between uh, points C and D, and it took us a long time to get back to a full recovery. And based on things like the uh, employment to population ratio and the participation rate, you could certainly argue that we have not yet fully recovered. What a lot of central banks do is instead of uh, focusing on both unemployment and inflation, which is what the Federal Reserve does, which they are uh, told to do by um, the uh, congressional mandate that gives them their, their license, uh, some central banks just focus on inflation targeting. And the idea is that uh, the central bank controls the money supply, they control interest rates, those are both monetary uh, measures, and so the best thing that they can do is just to control inflation, and if they're able to keep inflation uh, low and stable, then the unemployment rate will take care of itself. Uh, so, you know, they try, they if we're on this Phillips curve, for example, then if they can keep an inflation rate of 2%, then the unemployment rate will automatically be 6%. Obviously, the more credible they are, the more the public believes them that they will do whatever they need to to keep that inflation target there, the more successful they will be. So if we look at central bank independence and average inflation, so this is average inflation over a long time, almost three decades, 1962 to 1990. Uh, and then this is a measure of central bank independence in the mid-1980s. You can see that the more independent uh, a central bank was, the lower was the inflation rate. So you know, countries like the U.S., Switzerland, Germany, with fairly independent central banks had uh, relatively low inflation, and other countries with less independent central banks had uh, higher inflation. 
And finally, the last piece uh, that's important when trying to understand the Phillips curve and the relationship between inflation and unemployment is the idea of capacity utilization. Um, and so when there's a lot of uh, spare capacity, when there's a lot of unemployed workers, when there's a lot of factories that are not producing as much as they can or idle malls, uh, then firms will not be able to increase prices by as much. Um, similarly, if there is more competition, firms will not be able to increase their price as much. And so both of those things uh, will keep us lower over here and keep the uh, price markup lower. But as capacity utilization increases, so the longer we're in a boom, the fewer unemployed workers there are, uh, and the more that firms are producing as almost as much as they can, or the less competition there is, uh, the markup will increase and we'll get more inflation uh, as the unemployment rate uh, goes down. So that's an important thing to remember and it's the reason also why the multiplier tends to be larger uh, during recessions when there's a lot of uh, capacity that's unmet, that's being unused in the economy um, rather than in an expansion where there's uh, more capacity utilization uh, because when increased spending, when capacity utilization is high, will tend to just lead to higher prices.